Hi everyone, my name is Michael, I'm from Checkpoint, and I want to talk about the future, because it's cool. Um, you've probably seen the little booth outside in the Kaspersky Virtual Malware Museum that talks about the uh, mobile malware evolution from like 2007 until today. And that's like really awesome, you see like, there's a thousand malware families in 2014, a hundred thousand samples, differently obfuscated, never mind. Um, and that's a growing threat, and uh, that's true, and I agree. Uh, but most of these samples are actually quite primitive in the technological sense. What do I mean? Uh, even OBAD, which uh, perhaps some of us uh, heard about, uses stuff like, you know, you want to send an SMS, you just ask for permissions to send an SMS. Uh, you want to uh, be installed, then you really ask politely the user. And there are a little minority of uh, malware that goes into the kernel, the deep Linux stuff, <clears throat> but no one is actually attacking the middle area, the Android system itself. So this is what we're here to talk about. It's gonna be a hack and three acts. We'll talk about what the heck is Binder, we'll see how we can attack it, and it will be a short uh, but optimistic part about what can we do about it. Yay. First, let's meet the cast. These are the guys from my team who worked on the project. All, go, all credit goes to them. <clears throat> Our victim app, your average banking app. The noob attacker, it's just an average script kitty who wants to steal your money. The paw of death, our lead hacker attacker, who knows how Android works. The system services, we'll see why they're important in a second. <clears throat> and like in every good thriller, there's a mystery character, the binder. Spoiler alert, everything goes through the binder. So let's dive in. On an average monolithic OS uh, kernel, <clears throat> like Windows, every, uh, every like, application, uh, has to perform multiple syscalls all the time. Uh, the developer doesn't know it, but because it's all wrapped in higher level APIs, but it communicates with the kernel all the time, uh, which naturally extends the attack surface that uh, the attacker gets for privilege elevation attacks. So in Android, <clears throat> this is when you play music, in Android, they didn't want the same problem. They uh, didn't want to allow uh, every you know, Google Play app to communicate directly with the Linux kernel, which makes sense. So they said, let's go and put this privilege of syscalling <clears throat> into special processes. These are the system services. For example, if I'm a mobile developer, I want my bank app to play some music, I just you know, sum summon an API uh, that goes to the media player service, and it's the only one who's allowed to contact the driver. Um, wonderful, but there's only one problem. How do they contact? We just said that they're in different processes. So this is where the binder comes in. <clears throat> in reality, every app can go into the kernel, but only to communicate with the binder driver. Okay? <clears throat> Everything has to go through the binder. It, the binder is the mechanism for inter-process communication on Android. Okay, great. We won't go into uh, too much details here, but it's just important to remember that there is a real driver, the dev binder, and <clears throat> there's a user mode library, native lib binder or so, uh, that uh, performs some translation. It won't go into the details, <clears throat> but this lib binder is loaded into every activity, uh, uh, into every app, service, or Google Play app uh, that's in the system. And it transmits the, commu uh, this is just communicating between the processes. Don't want to go into that too much. And that's true for every app and for every service. You want to have intranet, you have to go through the binder for your uh, Wi-Fi. You, have to, you want to use the camera, the same story. You have to, um, I don't know, contact GPS uh, data, have to go through the binder. Everything goes through the binder. Great, so how can we use that to our advantage as hackers? Well, a simple example, key logging. Well, the picture is quite simple for a noob attacker. There's an input service, right, the keyboard on Android that we all know, and you can install a different one, right? So let's trick the user into installing our malicious keyboard. <clears throat> make it the default input device, and wonderful, I'll store a log on the side of every keystroke made. Um, that's actually what like, 
people did uh, quite recently. <clears throat> Why is that a bad idea? Well, even a slightly technical user will tell you, well, I, I can see this is not my keyboard. Come on, guys, right? Uh, it's not the default device, etc. So what will a lead attacker do? He knows that everything goes through the binder. So that has to be true for keystrokes from the keyboard to the banking app, in our case, right? <clears throat> Perhaps we can inject some malicious code, hook the binder mechanism itself, and see the data as it's transmitted between the keyboard service and our app. So that's exactly what we did. Short demo time. Right, okay. So you'll see, okay. <clears throat> we activated our uh, Kitty Bank app. Uh, we want to record the username and password of the user. This is just uh, uh, listing all the processes on the system to get the correct PID to hook the banking app. <clears throat> this is all you know, quick and dirty stuff for demonstration. And you'll see on the upper screen where we logged out all the relevant communication between the keyboard uh, service and the app itself. <clears throat> You see, we're starting to get keystrokes, key T, yeah, uh, every time you get the whole uh, buffer with every stroke. As an added feature, you'll see in a second that when you press login, you get the key value pairs that are actually sent for verification to the server, the key T and secret. And you'll see in the end, in a second, that the server, which is in the middle, will verify us as actually key T. Great. Okay, so this is how you steal password uh, in uh, less than a minute. Going back to the demonstration. Great. <clears throat> so let's try something more com complicated. Um, perhaps for some reasons uh, that I can go into, uh, ask me on the recess, <clears throat> you can't get the credentials. You couldn't uh, log his keystrokes. Perhaps he implemented, the banking app implemented a keyboard inside its own app so it doesn't go outside to the Android keyboard or something else. Perhaps you want to manipulate data as it's, after it's being like, transmitted, okay? So in our case, we show, again, this is a simple banking app that we've uh, created for demonstration purposes. So you have the first activity, which is just, you know, I want to transfer some money from, from my account to a different account. This is the amount that I send, then I press Transfer, it goes to a different activity, just a different screen that's waiting for uh, authorization from the banking server, right? That's the only thing that matters, yeah. The, the banking server data is the only truth in uh, the banking world. And then goes back. Great. So what can I do? I'm a noob attacker. Well, today it's quite, well, I would say widespread to try and make a fake banking app. It looks and feels the same as the real Kitty Bank, but it's under my control. Uh, I'm the attacker. So, goodbye, Kitty Bank. Hello, Shitty Bank. <clears throat> Why is that a bad idea? Um, every antivirus that, you know, uh, even the simplest uh, form of scanning will tell you, dude, this is not your banking app. This is a malicious app. It's very obvious. Yes, in the sense that it doesn't perhaps doesn't have the same signature or it just looks differently in the binary. Um, great. So what will our lead hacker do? He sees the same situation, right? But he knows that everything goes through the binder. Uh, well, that's wonderful, but we didn't contact any uh, outside services, so what do we care, right? Uh, yeah, everything we did is within the app, right? and it doesn't go through the binder, or does it? In reality, <clears throat> when an activity, for example, the first, log, uh, the first screen of the transfer amount, wants to pass these, da these data to the next screen that's trying to get authentication from the server, it has to pass data to the activity manager in the form of an intent, right? Uh, whenever we start an activity, we pass intent with all the data that the new activity has to know. And the only guy in the system who can actually create a new activity, new screen, is the activity manager. So I send my intent to the activity manager, get it back, send it into the <clears throat> authentication screen, etc. And every time I create a new, uh, a new 
activity, I have to go through the activity manager, which means go through the binder. What can we do? Well, let's do the same. Let's hook the same binder in the same spot, in the same app, and manipulate the data. And that's exactly what we did. Uh, one second. OK, so <clears throat> you see we're going into the transfer account. We just you know, uh, pushed in some default uh, uh, numbers because we're lazy. We want to transfer, let's say, $100,000 or kitty coins or whatever. Um, the central screen here is the uh, server. You see that we received the transfer to, from, the amount, everything is true. Wonderful. Uh, we do the same trick. We enumerate the processes. Uh, note that the same, this is the exact same script. We do the exact same hook, even though our functionality is completely different now. Okay. <clears throat> now we do uh, the same transfer. By the way, we feasibly could, uh, you know, uh, cheat in the, in the amount uh, number, for example, through the keyboard, right? We already know how to see the keyboard uh, uh, transactions. Uh, so I could, you know, when the user presses one, I could lie and say that it's a nine, but that's very visible and that's a bad idea. So now we've transferred, we've done the same thing, and I'll freeze. <clears throat> You can see there on our output, this is what we actually sent through the binder. We've caught the traffic the, that's uh, sent, the, the data to the authentication activity, and this time it's $900,000, uh, $900, and to the lead account, of course, and not to the original one. Okay, and you see that the banking service uh, server accepted it with no problem, and the user doesn't suspect anything. The user performed exactly the same action. Great, so this is how you cheat an innocent victim out of a lot of kitty coins in less than two minutes. Okay, so let's sum up. What are the advantages of the man in the binder attack technique? And I'll talk later why do we care. First, versatility. We use the same hook, multiple malicious functionalities, um, we can basically do anything. Uh, the only difference is the logic that we apply to the data that we grab. Second is it's app agnostic. I don't care if it's Viber or Skype. It will go eventually to the uh, media player service and will play whatever it is uh, that it's receiving uh, through the speakers. And this is where I'll catch the VoIP uh, data, like the VoIP sound. Uh, I don't need to RE any app. I don't care if they update. Uh, very useful. Third is stealth. First, because no one's looking at the binder at the moment. And B, and <clears throat> this is one of the important points, even if an antivirus really wanted to protect from, uh, against this kind of more advanced um, attacks, it couldn't. An antivirus than Android has the same limitations as any other third-party app on Google Play, uh, which will, you can't scan a different process. It doesn't matter what permissions you get, you can't do it. Two uh, important parts, uh, points. Man in the binary is not a vulnerability. It's important to note because uh, a couple of reporters already got uh, somewhat confused. Think of it as man in the browser. It's a data manipulation technique, but it's much worse because on Android, everything goes through the binder. The second point is, you probably noted, we assume the attacker has root permissions, right? Otherwise, how can we inject our code into a different process or a different system service or whatever? Uh, but that's an easy assumption, right? Uh, if we assume a uh, mediocre and up uh, level of attack skill, we know from history that every Android version has root exploits and it won't go away. It's some say that it's their own purpose, but oh, it's obvious that you, know, you always want to leave a possibility for the, your advanced users to uh, root their device. And we'll go uh, into that in three minutes. Now, a couple of rumors that you didn't hear from me because I have no proof. Um, first, you notice that we've created our own banking app. Uh, it's a very silly app. We didn't reverse any real-world banking apps because, well, 
it's illegal. But uh, I can tell you in secret that I am not aware of any banking app today that isn't vulnerable to this kind of data manipulation and theft. Second rumor is we talk about the, this is the next step of mobile, uh, of Android uh, malware, this next step of evolution, etc. But it's not as far as we, as you might think. Um, I heard from a friend of a friend that there is a guy who developed a rootkit for Android based on the binder mechanism already. And when we published our findings a uh, few months ago, he was quite pissed. Uh, for me, this is a very good sign. Uh, if I'm pissing off a rootkit developer, I'm happy. Great. So to finish up this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, part, what are you trying to tell me? That uh, when I'm ready, I can have all the permissions on the device? Uh, no, I'm telling you that when you're ready, you won't have to. So the third part, uh, what can we do about it? Well, if you're an Android developer, you have two vectors of operation. First, you can take control of your own process memory, right? You can scan the binder yourself, see if anything looks fishy, but that's problematic for two reasons. Uh, first, because you don't necessarily know how to do it. You're just a developer. Uh, and second, because it won't, uh, uh, it won't solve the problem of the other side. What if someone injected something into the keyboard servers? Uh, the better way is to be aware of this type of attack. Minimize the amount of data that's going through into process communication. Uh, note that from one activity to another, it goes through the binder and back into your app. If you have to send it outside the app, then, and, and it's sensitive information, encrypt it. Decrypt it on the other side in the new activity that you create. <coughs> so. As a security industry, what can we do about it? Well, there are two options. Either we keep scanning files and APKs uh, before installation, like is the 90s, which, in my opinion, kind of sucks. Or we grow a pair, and we're brave, and we get root ourselves. Don't tell my boss I said it. Uh, <clears throat> It will allow us, for example, runtime process scanning, monitoring against hooks, against other uh, anomalous activity. Uh, you can uh, implement software firewall, uh, because without root, you can't do it. Avast, uh, their endpoint uh, agent already does that, uh, which is awesome. If your system happens to be rooted somehow, uh, then they, will, uh, uh, they give you for free the option for software firewall. You can implement an inside an intra binder, an intra Android firewall, for example, uh, for binder transactions. You can block things that look fishy, look for anomalies within inter process communication, and the possibilities are literally endless. Do that, please. Thank you very much. If anyone has uh, questions or Talk to me later if you want to go into the technical details that I completely uh, scraped under the rug to do 20 minutes. <laughs>